Today we are at Lennar. I'm with my buddy Kevin and we're going to talk about uptime. What does uptime mean to you? How do we get there? This man has been doing this for decades and I don't want to date the young man because he's much better looking and younger than <laughs> I am, but we are talking about decades of information that can help you. The importance of uptime. Does that bring in machines? Absolutely. Does that bring in cutting tools? Absolutely. Processes? Absolutely. All of this goes into it. But again, I'm not the expert. I'm a learner like you. And I brought Kevin on camera to help educate all of us the importance of uptime. We're standing in front of a Toyota machine, Kevin. Yep. You have a nice cell here that's constantly loading and unloading. It looks like you kind of standardized your shop and you've been around a long time, three generations at this point, which is even more exciting. But uptime, standardization, and productivity are how you run this place, isn't it? That's correct, absolutely. And by buddy, he means we met about an hour and a half ago. <laughs> <laughs> Instant friends, you know, what can I say? like this. <laughs> Instant friends, for sure. But Tony, thanks for having me on, first of all. But yes, he's correct that we've been, I'm second generation. My son's here as third. My father started the company. So we've been on a whole journey of optimizing machine tools, cutting, uh, utilization of everything here from the human right down to the Toyota machine right behind us and this FMS system as well. So when you take a look at a shop, we're a job shop. So I think it's, first of all, it's important to understand that we are a production house. And by production, I mean, we have about a minimum run of about a hundred pieces a year up to about 20,000 pieces a year. So that's important to understand the, the lens that I'm looking through. It means lots of setups. It means, but everything repeats. That's also important to understand. So we've designed the whole shop around utilization, throughput and productivity, as he's already mentioned through a bunch of different categories. To take you all the way back to the beginning, we come from standalone machining centers, not this FMS style that's behind us. We, start, we started with a single C-frame style vertical years ago, back in, that's like early 80s. We got rid of that machine some years ago, but it was here forever. Then we moved on to two pallet horizontals, and that was another productivity gain. And quickly, my father and me as a kid, we started to see this picture of how utilization you got to get rid of pallet change, or excuse me, part change time. You got to learn how to cut fast. You got to learn to do your setups faster, more efficiently. Started leaving the tooling and the adapters together. And so all these pieces started to come together up to 2001, where we decided the market, all of you in the audience will understand this, but the, the market really went to, customers no longer wanted to buy 250 pieces of something in a one batch run and one delivery. We started seeing how the inventory control was like the next level of managing your shop. That's where in 2001, we went to Toyota. And uh, this is now a four spindle. These are 450 Toyotas. This has four spindles and 22 pallets on this side and two load stations. We'll go over this in a few minutes. We'll take you for a little walk. The Toyota came to us and they says, okay, we're going to finance this first for you because as a small shop, we had like five or six machines. Uh, we had to get to like, how do we afford all this automation connected to one spindle at that time? So we bought a 12 pallet, one load station, single Toyota spindle package. And then God help us, we had to get it running within that first year, making money to make that payment. So Toyota was extremely helpful in that journey for us in, back in 2001. As we saw the benefits of now having jobs set up, being able to do much shorter runs, that was a whole like eye-opening. Not only does your accounting start to work out your cash flow, you're shipping constantly, only making what you ship. We also could get into stocking programs just in time. We do all those things of uh, just in time, stocking, con bonds, and like pull cards. Like all of our customers are different, just like all of you in the job shop world. It's just. No two customers are the same in how you manage their inventory, their flow. So anyway, this in 2001, stepping into this piece of equipment enabled us to tailor our whole business towards that model of just in time, just making what you can cash out on instantly right away. The other thing that you get with this, and I'm gonna share this with you that's really beneficial, is say a customer calls you and we've all had this happen like 3 million times and it's like eight o'clock in the morning, they're like, oh my God, somebody didn't order something or we didn't release something last night and it's not even made, it's not on the schedule. We run multiple shifts. So a lot of times we're able to just drop a pallet in and have it on the truck by two o'clock in the afternoon because, and, and not even charge them for it for that big setup fee that we're used to on machines that are standalone. 
So it becomes very customer centric. We have first shift doing different uh, part number mix than we have on, a, on like a second shift, the following shift or a third shift. So you're able to do high mix in a 24 hour period, which not only is a machine utilized, because that's part of this conversation, but your cash flows you also greatly affected in what I just said, because you're taking care of multiple customers across one work center in a 24 hour period. So I could speak about this all day, but we quickly realized with in, stepping into this zone with all those benefits that machine uptime, it also addresses. And that's like your biggest cost in your shop is the utilization of your equipment. Second to that is obviously your employees standing there loading it. But utilization, we're definitely in the 80s somewhere, about 85, 87, across our systems and across even our standalones because of what we're doing. Uh, we do machine monitoring now live, so we have all this remotely and we our employees understand if they're doing their job well or not. And, you know, so we, we've just a high focus on machines staying in the cut, staying in cycle, let's say it that way as much as possible in your 24 hour cycle. That has been a focus since 2001, for sure. You've pretty much nailed every topic I, I, I want to cover. That was awesome. <laughs> um, so I'm only gonna follow up with one more question, sure. Kevin. And that's, I know you've made a recent investment in this system itself, the one that's mm -hmm. behind me here. It's been running for 20 years without issue yeah. for the most part, right? That's correct. And you just made an investment for yeah. another 20 years. So I segue from that to say, how important is it to have a reliable machine and that's a reliable a setup yep to keep that ultimate yeah. uh, uh, automation up. I'm smiling because <laughs> back when I was a kid, grays, grays are now contradictory to that. So this is a while ago, but back in let's say the late nineties and I tried to go to second shift and then I had a couple of guys here um, running second shift. I get calls out of bed with machines broke down and I'd be like, oh, I'm gonna go in there. I'm gonna fix that because we have to keep things going. So I was very familiar with the equipment from day one and what ran and what didn't run. So this 2001, we bought our first Toyota. We have nine of them now. So that just gives you an idea of how much I bought into that, the, the philosophy of their build. So you get into a, a premium machine like a Toyota, your uptime stays way up due to even failure. Failure was just something that annoyed me to no end, you know, silly things breaking. Because the whole machine tool, and all of us know this in the machining world, the machine tool is only as good as the tool changer, the pumps, the, the valving, like the control, like the, whatever the weakest link is, is going to shut the whole thing down. So with Toyota, what we found was a very robust package. And I mean, and I could walk around these machines, I could point, their pumps are oversized and you can compare this to any brand you want out there. I've seen them all and been to all the shows and with you guys tire kicking, <laughs> the pumps are bigger, all your valving's bigger, your hoses are all screwed on and, you know, connected securely it, there's so much different build philosophy there's more iron in this machine um, these 450s have had tremendous uptime we don't put spindles we don't wear spindles out so we the 2001 machine finally wore out for other reasons there are more electronics reasons on the fanic side actually um, but our 2003 is still on the system and we go up to 2015 out of the four machines so We've actually worn one machine out, but it really wasn't the iron. It was the it was the control side of things that wasn't worth repairing and rebuilding. The one machine you wore out, I heard a quote from you, something about 20 years at 24 seven, yeah. somewhere around this round. There's no question. These, you know, these were the tw 2001 ran about two, uh, 20 years, uh, three shifts, all cast iron. In those cast iron parts, we're running a six inch face mill full cut, 30 horsepower, peg in the meter. You can even hear the RPM dying down because it's CBN, so you know the RPM's way up there. Sounds like we're cutting aluminum, but it did that its entire life for three shifts in the same spindle. And that's a 40 taper big plus spindle. So the spindle diameter of the bearings, I looked at all of that when we went to buy them. So I was very in the nuts and bolts of the thing when we picked a brand. And now we've standardized it around the Toyota brand. Again, like I said, nine of them, six of those are 450 and then 630s are three of them. So know that know the company well, know the equipment well. 
I think you've earned the opportunity to do a mic drop and moonwalk <laughs> off of here if you want to. I'm not sure you want to. We're going to hold back on other talents. We'll do that in another video, maybe. So but for thanks. everyone watching, Kevin and I are going <laughs> to hop on other conversations. So tune into new other videos that we'll be making where we talk about the rigidity and the, we go into details about some of the products that are made here that are so difficult to make. And then we dive into the long term partnership that he's had with Toyota and Alta here at Lenar. And I think that's important for everyone to understand. So stay tuned for those videos. Kevin, Thank really an awesome you. job. You made Thank my you, job sir. incredibly easy today. And yes, <laughs> come we back did for just more. become it's best friends despite his joke about. I need to talk ago. about. <laughs> I'm going to see him on his boat in Florida. We'll see you all again soon. <laughs>